Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use JMeter's recording feature. You can use this feature in order to be able to create your tests much faster than having to do it manually. Um, because typically what you would do is you would actually create a new uh, JMeter test and then you would have to add each individual feature by right clicking and then going to add and then adding thread groups, different configuration uh components and uh for example if you want to test your web application you would have to go in and add the specific samplers for being able to issue http requests now instead of actually having to do this manually uh, you can set up a jmeter recording feature or a proxy and it will actually read all of the requests that your browser is making and then you can use that to quickly generate your your testing scripts so let's go ahead and get started. I have uh, JMeter running right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, rename this test plan to login page demo. And then this is just simply um, so that you can actually see what this particular uh, JMeter test is for. We'll go ahead and save it. Otherwise it's gonna constantly ask us uh, to save and then pick a particular file. So uh, we'll just uh, give it the same name it's suggesting. So login page demo, and we'll save this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this uh, templates button. And what this will uh, do for us is give us a, a specific template that we can use here. Now, uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to use the recording template. And I'll go ahead and create. So here it did a couple of things. Um, first of all, it added these user-defined variables, which is something we're not going to be using here. Request defaults is something um, that you can use to actually uh, default all your different options. Uh, for example, if you're using the same name for all of your HTTP requests, you can actually define it here, and then you would update your tests so that you don't you can easily control and change those variables in one place instead of doing it in every request. But um, I'll show it to you in later videos. And then the cookie manager is a way for you to be able to keep track of the particular session that the user is initiating. So this is very useful, especially in scenario where you're trying to actually simulate the behavior using going to your application, clicking login, uh, typing in the credentials, and then using that cookie information to be able to perform subsequent requests so you can validate your end-to-end -end application. And this is actually doing things for you automatically on the back end by recording all of the details for a given thread that's executing. And then the other thing it's doing is it's giving you a thread group, which is basically a way for you to be able to execute the specific HTTP requests and the different assertions that you can have um, for executing your test. And then the recording controller is what is being used by JMeter in order to uh, actually place the specific requests that are being done by your browser. And then under the workbench, um, it actually added a couple of things. One is the HTTPS test script recorder, which is uh, controlling the ability for you to be able to actually pass all the requests through the browser to Jamie and application. And it basically acts as a reverse proxy server. So the requests are issued to this uh, test script recorder, and then they're actually sent to the recording controller. And then the view results tree is giving you the ability to actually see the different types of requests that are being made uh, for troubleshooting and analysis purposes. Uh, this view result tree is actually used once you start executing the script uh, or the individual requests. They're not going to be used uh, when you're actually recording the session. So now that we have this set up, the important thing to note is we have to actually make sure that the port number is uh, an available port number on this machine and I know it's available here and then you can click start basically what this is going to do is going to start up that uh, proxy server for you to be able to configure now another thing that you can tweak here is for example in grouping I typically click on do not group samplers and what this will do is it will make sure it will just uh, record everything on this, this recording controller uh, instead of actually creating separate uh, thread groups and other containers for each uh, particular sampler. And um, the rest of it I pretty much keep the same. So I'll go ahead and click start here. It tells you that uh, it created a certificate. Now this is uh, important if you're doing HTTPS type traffic and uh, validation scripts for uh, SSL type traffic. 
you can actually um, register the certificate that uh, JMeter generates so that it can actually um, investigate the SSL traffic and decrypt it and encrypt it appropriately. But you do not actually want to keep this certificate registered. And this is why it's actually also uh, made to be valid for seven days because you, this is a potential security issue that uh, you don't want to expose your computer to. So I'll go ahead and click OK here. And it actually places that uh, file in this bin folder. Um, it, it's supposed to put it in the bin folder here. Um, and you can actually use that, use that file to actually configure in um, in your application. So, but again, for the purpose of this demo, I'm not actually going to be using it. So I, I don't need to um, install it anywhere. So now that I have this running, let's actually take a look at the website that we're going to be testing. And uh, I'm going to be testing my application that's hosted in Service Fabric. And you can see that it's accessible and running correctly. And then the next step I'm going to do is now go to the internet options on this computer. And I'll configure the proxy settings to point to this um, to the server. So it's going to be as simple as just uh, saying localhost and port 8888. I'll hit OK. And then when I actually try to navigate it, uh, to it, you can see nothing really changed. But what you'll notice is that um, under the recording controller, I actually see a request actually being recorded. And if I go here uh, to the view results tree, I can actually see it show up here as well. And if I switch to the browser view uh, and go to response data, you'll see that I have the same session information actually being uh, outputted here as well. So we can see that this uh, report is actually working correctly. Um, and then basically all I need to do now is just simulate the behavior that uh, I want to uh, be able to uh, automate. And that is going to be a user navigating to this home page then clicking the profile button and then typing in uh, the credentials. So in this case, dev and test, I'll hit login. It logs in and shows me the information about the cookies of the current user that's logged in. And then I'll go to home uh, because now we also have this currently logged in user information showing. And then I'll uh, just simulate a logout activity. And uh, that's the extent of my test that I want to be able to uh, automate. So since now I'm done, um, with the recording of the script, I can go ahead and stop the recorder. And it is, it's important also to make sure that you open up the uh, internet options and uh, remove uh, the settings, uh, because otherwise, since we actually start to stop the proxy server, it's no longer going to be responding to requests and uh, your browser is not going to function correctly. And it could lead to other problems as well. So. Sometimes what also happens in JMeter is even though you start uh, the script recorder and configure your proxy settings, sometimes you'll get your browser to not be able to actually complete the request. And typically what I do in that case, I'll just save my test and I'll go ahead and close JMeter, restart it, start the script recorder once again, and most of the time it actually fixes the problem. I'm not really sure what causes that issue, but that's something that I have to do periodically. So I can go ahead and close this browser now and actually go through and uh, validate that this script is working correctly. So we'll go ahead and uh, clear all of the results here. And uh, now I'm going to just go ahead and make sure that my uh, thread group is configured correctly. And it is uh, for the purpose of what I'm trying to do. So it's going to simulate one thread, which is basically one user. It's going to uh, ramp up in one second, and then it's going to only execute once. So in my view results tree, I should only see this entire uh, script executing once. So go ahead and let's go ahead and run it. So as you can see, and let me switch to the browser view again. Uh, we'll see that uh, the user is navigating to the home page, and we can see the session here. Um, then we're going to the profile page, and a couple of things to note here. When you see these um, type of uh, requests that are being made, you can go to the request tab where the sampler result and actually see more details. So um, you can see that the, the, the thread information, the connection time, latency, other information, you can see the response uh, header information and uh, some of the data behind it. So what you'll see is uh, first I'm actually taken to this um, profile page but then it issues a 302 redirect. And the reason for that is because our application notices that the user is not logged in, and it actually takes you to the login page. 
with uh, a return URL. So in this case, the response data, and that's why you get the login page. Now we're on the login page, but in this case, if we go to the sampler result, we'll see that um, we actually perform uh, a get in here, and then we actually do a post. So um, the, the reason why you saw a get here is because uh, as soon as we do a post, then there's a, a get response. We issue basically, we're redirected um, to the actual profile page. So that's why the get is there. So when you actually click on login, it actually shows you this, the second entry because that's the end result. And you can see that the user logged in. Then we see that the user uh, is on the profile page. And then uh, we click the home button, which takes us to the home page. And then we hit log out. And again, when you expand it, we are actually uh, redirected. And then we're taken to the home page. And in this case, the user logged out. So we don't see that second entry here. And then the user um, basically is again on the home page. So a couple of uh, things to note. Um, you'll actually see that there are multiple um, requests that are being made. So for example, when we go to the profile page, we see this login. Well, the thing is, um, this this is good. This is the behavior we're looking for. But once we log in, we're actually on the profile page. So this uh, request right here is actually not needed. And so um, is this last one. It's no longer needed because the logout actually would be the same one. So what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and actually remove or disable those type of requests from our test to optimize it. So we'll go here and we know that we don't need this one. So I can right click and then just disable. Or if you hit toggle, that will basically either enable it or disable it. And you can use a shortcut which is what I'm going to be using. So I'll just uh, click Control T on uh, this one here. So, so now it's disabled and we can um, run through this request once again. So let me go ahead and actually clear out this test result and then run it again. And now you'll see that we're taken to the home page. Um, then we click on profile, we're taken to the login page. We log in and see the profile page and it gives us all the cookie information. Then we go to the home page, we see the currently logged in user, and then we log out and we're on the home page. So that's pretty much uh, how simple it is to actually create this. Now, um, if you actually wanted to be able to simulate, um, for example, 10 uh, requests, you can simply change it to 10 here and it will actually simulate 10, uh, 10 iterations of this. And if we go to the result tree and actually run this, you'll see that it executed multiple times. Um, now, you can also tweak this a little bit more. So, for example, instead of doing uh, 10 requests, you can actually say forever. This will basically uh, execute this test until you actually stop it. Or you can say scheduler and then say you want the duration of the test to be 10, 10 seconds or 60 seconds or whatever the duration you want it to be. And tell it, tell it how long do you want it to wait before it's starting up. Um, and Basically, this gives you the ability to actually start generating load tests. Now, you can also uh, make this test a little bit more complicated. So, for example, when we go to our results uh, pane, and let's say uh, a user actually tries to log in, and we want to validate that uh, we actually get this cookie information, you can actually do this by uh, making sure that when the user actually goes to log in, you can add what's called an assertion. And you can do that by simply right clicking on that, going to assertions, and then going to a response assertion. And in here, we can add uh, a particular pattern to actually test. And I'll just uh, paste it from that result here. So I'll go ahead and right click copy, go to the response assertion, and then I'll go ahead and paste it here. So now I can save it, and um, I'll go ahead and clear it out and run it again. Now you can see that you know the behavior doesn't really change. So how do we know if it's working or not? And in fact, you can also see that uh, we're now actually executing forever, which is not what I wanted. So how do we validate that this actual response assertion is working? Well, it's pretty simple. So let's say you add another assertion and then type it, type in some value that you know doesn't exist. So um, I'm pretty sure that this value doesn't exist, so we should be able to validate if it's working correctly or not. So let's go ahead and run this and go to the view results. And now you can actually see that it failed. 
Now, why did it fail? Because the response assertion and test failed, text expected to contain this is a test and it doesn't exist. So now we know that it actually it's working correctly. So we'll go ahead and remove this. Uh, go back to the result tree, clear out the results, and then run it again. And you can see everything is good. So this is uh, basically a quick example of how you can record a test um, instead of having to add each individual setting yourself. And then you can do things like adjust the the default settings. So for example, if you wanted to uh, basically make sure that you have only one place where you want to change this uh, server name URL, you would actually pull it from here and put it inside of your request defaults. And then this way you can actually remove it from all of your HTTP requests and it will start using the default settings from the request defaults. And next time, if you need to change it across all of your requests, you can simply do it at the request default uh, level and you're done. So hopefully this was useful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave your uh, comments in the comment section below and I will talk to you next video.